Today, we've got something really fascinating. It's uh, a transcript, but the key thing is the original recording date. Yeah, get this, October 24th, 2000. We're looking at a review of the ATI TV Wonder PCI card from way back then. Right, so our mission today is to explore why this review is so significant. It's a super early example of online video product reviews. We're talking years before YouTube was even around. Exactly, it's hard to even picture now, but back in 2000, online video wasn't really, well, it wasn't a thing like it is today. Product reviews, mostly text. Maybe some pictures. So for someone like Rodney Reynolds, the creator from 3D Game Man, to actually film himself reviewing computer hardware, I mean, that was pretty groundbreaking stuff. Yeah. Really ahead of the curve. Okay, so let's talk about the actual product. The ATI TV Wonder PCI card. What exactly was it? Well, it was this internal card you slotted into your PC, into a PCI slot. And it basically combined a TV tuner with a, a video capture card. So you could watch TV on your computer and record video. Yeah, precisely. The box came with the card itself, naturally, an installation CD for the drivers and software, some audio cables, and a manual. And Rodney highlighted some features that sound, well, maybe a bit quaint now, but probably quite advanced then, like intelligent television. Uh huh. And video wallpaper. Imagine having like a live TV feed as your actual desktop background. Yeah, pretty wild for the time. Wow. Okay. What else? Channel previews, closed captioning support, which is still important, and uh, video capture. So you could hook up your VCR or camcorder and get that footage onto your PC. It was really about bridging that gap between the TV and the computer, wasn't it? Absolutely. And this was all running on Windows 98, which definitely places it firmly in that era. Right. Did Rodney mention what made it stand out from you know other cards at the time? Yeah, he did. He pointed to things like a video magazine feature, um, the ability to digitally zoom in on the picture, scheduled viewing or recording. Like setting a timer on your VCR, but on your PC. Sort of, yeah. And that video desktop feature again, he clearly felt it packed in more than the competition. And his overall verdict, did it work well? Compatibility was always a nightmare back then. He seemed pretty positive, said it works quite well. Uh -huh. And crucially, he mentioned no conflicts with his other hardware. He specifically called out having an AGP GeForce card, a graphics card, and all his PCI slots were full. Ah, oh, the classic PCI slot shuffle. So no conflicts was a big plus. Definitely a win. The video apparently even shows the inside of the PC, you see the card in the slot and uh, the little internal audio cable running from it to the sound card. Right, you had to physically connect the audio feed inside the case, sometimes to the auxiliary input, sometimes CD audio in. Exactly. It's just a reminder of how, well, hands-on PC building and upgrading used to be. So what did he actually show the software doing? He demoed quite a bit. <laughs> Surfing channels using the keyboard, going full screen with the TV picture, uh, tweaking settings for closed captions, Okay. managing digital video files. Yeah looking at still image galleries captured from the TV, uh -huh. an EPG, an electronic program guide. An EPG in 2000, that's pretty advanced. It was, plus controls for parental locks, adjusting brightness, contrast, all that standard display stuff. He gave a decent tour. And his final take, the price. He concluded it was, and I quote loosely here, one of the best TV capture cards on the market for the price which he said was around $100 Canadian. Mm -hmm. $100 Canadian back then, not super cheap, but for all that functionality. Right, he seemed to think it was good value. Okay, let's pull back a bit. Comparing that $100 card from 2000 to, well, today. It's almost incomparable, isn't it? I mean, think about it. High definition video, internet streaming, apps, yeah. and all that stuff is just built in now. Yeah, into our TVs, our phones, cheap little streaming sticks that cost maybe $30. This ATI card was like, an early ancestor of that whole media convergence idea. It absolutely was. But the review itself, the video, that's maybe even more significant in some ways. How so? Well, just think about the effort involved. Okay. Making a video in 2000, editing it, uploading it somewhere. Remember, no YouTube. Bandwidth was slow. Storage was expensive. Right. You couldn't just whip out your phone, record, and tap upload. Exactly. It was a real technical hurdle. Yeah. So Rodney doing this, putting a video review online when almost everyone else was just writing text, he was genuinely pioneering, a very early adopter of you know what would become a dominant form of online content. It really puts it in perspective. This wasn't just a review. It was like a glimpse into the future of how we'd share information online. Definitely. So the key takeaway here is that this 2000 review of the ATI TV Wonder by Rodney Reynolds isn't just about an old piece of tech. It's a landmark, a very early example of the kind of online video content we now take completely for granted. 
Yeah, showing off features that were advanced for the time on a platform that barely existed yet for video sharing. Pretty amazing. And that leads to maybe a thought for you, the listener. Think about how incredibly far things have moved on since 2000. What parts of our technology today are online habits, our content? What might look just as primitive or fascinating to people looking back, say, 20 years from now? That's a really interesting question to ponder. So to sum up, the ATI TV Wonder Card is probably one of the best TV slash capture cards on the market for the price. It's um, around $100 Canadian, which is really cheap for a card that can do so much. This is Rodney Reynolds for 3D Game Man, and next week I will be doing a review of the Viper 2. Until then, bye.